G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel, 1MJ here. Well, as I suspected, Bitcoin would break out. It just broke out in the opposite direction that I thought it was. So if we kind of have a look in here, this was that uh, ascending sort of wedge, ascending triangle that it had formed. And I really did think it was going to kind of break down to the lower side and come back down to around the $11,300 range somewhere around about here before we started to sort of push upwards, but instead it broke out upwards. But what we can see is that it's got some resistance here. And again, it's only just wicked onto it and pulled back. Uh, so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see whether it does something fairly similar and we sort of travel sideways for a little bit now, or whether it just again breaks straight through or again breaks down. Uh, you know, I, I'm no savant and I, I can't tell you exactly what it's going to do. I can just tell you what I think it's going to do. And I really did think that we were going to break back down. I thought we were going to see a little bit of a, a correction after pumping up so much, you know, for quite some time. Uh, again, back since the 21st of July, basically Bitcoin's been going up and up and up. Uh, and usually at some stage there's a bit of a correction. But again, this sort of 12% correction here, I suppose, was probably you know, the, the correction that was going to happen. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Likewise, uh, we go over to Ethereum uh, and it's got some resistance here, but it might be starting to build some support on that resistance. So it's the kind of $430 range. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that this has been support and resistance uh, on occasions before. So, you know, we haven't been back up here for a while. The last time we were here was the 5th of August, 2018. So it's definitely been a while since uh, Ethereum has made it here. And we can see that, you know, we got up and we've gone above it, but then we've pulled back down. And it really does look like it's kind of now, hopefully, starting to make that 430-ish dollar mark. It's 427 there. But the 430-ish dollar mark, Maybe it's going to make that as some support. Uh, and again, same kind of thing. Maybe we'll travel sideways for a little while like we did here and then have another run up because that's the general pattern at the moment. Bitcoin uh, and all the cryptocurrencies, they are performing somewhat similar, just, you know, some are outperforming Bitcoin. You know, and Ethereum's been one of them, but, you know, it had that big sell-off and it kind of pumped up and went sideways and pumped up and went sideways and then, you know, really started to make that move. And if we come back over to Bitcoin we can see it's very similar. Pumped up, went sideways a little bit, pumped up, went sideways a little bit, and it started to pump up again. So all the coins, you know, act roughly the same as long as they're good coins. You know, the, the lower cap ones, they'll just pump a lot harder and there's a lot more money to be made in those. But the thing uh, with the altcoins uh, is they will dump harder than Bitcoin. So Bitcoin out of the cryptocurrencies, other than stable coins, is the most stable, still highly volatile but it's getting less and less volatile, so it's the safer bet. But again, you won't make the maximum returns uh, if you put all your money just into Bitcoin. Not that there's anything wrong with that, not that I'm saying anyone shouldn't do that, but if you're really trying to maximize those gains, you need at least some kind of exposure to the altcoins, and, and that's where you make the real gainers. Again, my Bitcoin at the moment, uh, and I bought back in here around the six, $7,000 mark, uh, it's only up sort of 60, 70 percent. <laughs> you know, I should be careful when I say only because 60, per 70, 60 to 70 percent is still bloody good in a couple of months. But I've got altcoins that are up, you know, 500, 600, some getting close to 700 uh, percent in similar amounts of time. So, you know, that's the way it is. They are the more risky ones and I only put small amounts into them. Literally, I think the most I've put into any altcoin is about $1,500. Most of them I've put in a whole lot less and yeah, they've performed a whole lot better, but you know, they could dump at any stage and they could dump really, really hard. Uh, and again, you know, they'll outperform Bitcoin by uh, a country mile provided they're doing good and it's in a bull market. But as soon as it turns bear market, well, it's the complete opposite. They will just bleed 10 times as hard as Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's a safer bet and any new investors in there that are thinking about getting into cryptocurrencies, that's generally the better place to start with Bitcoin and, and just the bigger caps, you know, Ethereum maybe as well and XRP if you believe in it and all the rest of it. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't provide any financial advice to anyone i just give you my personal opinion and having been you know in the crypto space for you know sort of three plus years you know getting close to sort of four now you know, i'd like to think that i have a little bit of knowledge not 
no no savant or anything like that and no oracle i'm no chain link <laughs> but i got a reasonable idea of how things work at times anyway something i wanted to have a look at uh, this is a pretty interesting story. So it's been raining quite hard over uh, in China there, uh, in the Sichuan province. They've had quite a lot of rain, and apparently it's really affected the hash rate. So 10 to 20% down uh, in hash rate. And that area of China, uh, the article says here that they have around about 50% of the Bitcoin mining happening over there. So interesting that the weather can really affect it. And uh, this story and the next story, so we go over here and we have a look at the US Postal Service is considering using blockchain and possibly on the Ethereum network to uh, do the elections because you know the whole uh, pandemic that's going on at the moment, obviously it might be hard for people to actually go and physically vote and so they're thinking about using uh, blockchain to do it. But it, it's made me think about something. Do you know, do you think that blockchain is going to be mass adopted anytime soon? I've, I've, you know, chopped and changed between yes and no a number of times and, and I would have to think, I don't think it's actually going to happen in the immediate future. I'm not sure that we're going to see mass adoption uh, in this cycle because, you know, the, the sort of more popular belief is at the moment that the peak of this cycle will be roughly sort of Christmas next year, somewhere around about there. Could be a little bit earlier, could be a little bit later. Hard to know. But I'm not sure blockchain is going to be rolled out to the masses by then. I think we still might be another cycle or two away. Could possibly be two cycles away, so that's still like another, you know, nine, ten years from now. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not sure that I see blockchain being adopted by the masses in this cycle now don't get me wrong i still think this cycle is going to be massive and i think it may be the biggest cycle possibly ever as well because it's institutional money uh, that is starting to get into it and that's really going to push it right up you know mass adoption that'll probably push it a whole lot further but i think it's going to take some time i, I think you know the institutions that are getting in now, you know, they'll be considered the mavericks, you know what I mean, the real early adopters, even though they're quite late to the party. Crypto's been around for 11 years already. You know, so grayscale and, you know, micro strategy and things like that, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be looked at in the future as, you know, the real early adopters. And I don't think the true mainstream will get into it for a while. A lot of the big businesses still, you know, completely believe that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, you know, it's all funny money and none of it's real and it's going to zero and it's never going to be used and all the rest of it. But once it hits 20,000, all of a sudden people will go, oh no, this has gone back up again and now it's going higher again. And that will start to change people's minds. But unfortunately, at the peak of this cycle that's coming up, Bitcoin's most likely going to do exactly the same thing. The whole crypto industry will likely do the same thing. It's going to go through another bear market. I don't think the bear market will be as bad as this one that we just went through now because of we've, they've got that mass adopt, uh, sorry, uh, institutional adoption and they're not going to want it to dump so much. They're definitely going to be wanting to buy more and all the rest of it. But yeah, I don't think the bear market will be as bad after this one. Uh, and that's what I mean. Once it all starts to stabilize a little bit, that's when mass adoption is going to sort of come. The, the general public, they just wouldn't be able to tolerate, you know, the kind of massive swings that we have uh, in cryptocurrencies at the moment. You know, like if the general public got in at, the, at right now, at the very start of a bull run, they would be loving it. But once we hit that peak and, you know, the smart money started to sell off and the, you know, the regular Joe Schmoes and all the rest of it just watched their, you know, $100 turn into $10,000 and then turn back into $150, that would really hurt them. That, you know, they wouldn't be able to handle that. So that's what makes me think we're still at least another probably cycle or two away from true mass adoption. Bitcoin needs to be, you know, a lot more stable. You know, it can still have some fluctuation, but, you know, not retracing by 80%. Uh, that's just too much. The, the general public wouldn't be able to hand that. And again, we're still not even set up for it. Like this story right here basically goes on to say that, you know, the US Postal Service, they're just looking at blockchains. They're not actually, um, you know, planning to do it. And they still need to see, you know, whether it's Ethereum network or a completely separate network that they're going to use. And they're only really looking at 
because they're kind of going to be forced into having to at least look at it due to the pandemic that's going on. It's not like they were already planning to use this stuff anyway, at least not in the sort of near future. So that's what makes me think mass adoption is still some time away. And by the time, you know, mass adoption happens, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum and whatever currencies are going to be around at that stage, whatever platforms, they will be a lot more stable. There'll be still tons of new ones and the newer ones will still have the, you know, massive swings and things like that. Any new cryptocurrency, the latest, hottest thing, you know, like DeFi at the moment, uh, they will still have, uh, you know, massive swings, not as much as what they do now. The whole industry as a whole will start to mature and we, the, the gains won't be there like uh, they currently are now, but there, there'll still be gains to be made. Don't worry about that. But now is the time that the smart money wants to be in, you know, before it really goes mainstream. And again, it's all, you know, over-regulated, which is most likely going to happen. That's what happens in all markets. And, you know, they've been talking about it for ages that we need, you know, governments and things, they need to stop stifling, uh, you know, emerging markets and things like that. But they can't help themselves. As soon as they see something, there's money to be made there in there and they'll regulate it and tax the you know backside out of it to make sure that they get their cut and then it just basically makes it, you know, it's not the market that it was. At some stage, cryptocurrencies, they'll be like our regular markets and then there's going to be something else that comes along and it's just about the smart people keeping their eye out for what's coming next. Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, they've still got probably another, you know, again, maybe let's say a decade of, you know, good gains to be made but the gains will start to get less and less and less and you know it'll you know sort of level out then we're going to have to look for whatever the new emerging market is where the big money is going to be made and that's something that i've really you know just tried to you know drill into my brain that this kind of stuff it's not going to last forever. This Bitcoin current, uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency thing, it's going to be mass adopted. I know that. I've, I've known that for a while and that's why I've stuck with it and, you know, read as much as I can and, you know, watched as many YouTubers as I can and got on Twitter and got on GitHub and, you know, got on Discord and all those kind of things. Done as much research as I can to make sure that at least I fundamentally believe in it. Because if I don't believe in it, then it doesn't matter how much money there is to be made. I'll probably just lose money because I'm not really understanding, uh, you know, the tech and, you know, where it's going to go. So that's, you know, that's why I got in. I, I've done the research. I've put the time in and I've, uh, you know, I've, I've watched the market go to its peak and I've watched it come right down to its bottom and now I've watched it come back up again. And yeah, I've made my mind up. This is the best place that I can be at the moment. But in 10 years time, 20 years time, 30 years time, whatever it may be, there's probably going to be somewhere else that is, you know, where the next big gains will be made. And I can't just be, you know, solely focused on cryptocurrencies for the rest of my life because I will miss other opportunities. It's not to say that I will ever not be in cryptocurrencies in the future, but I need to be constantly looking for what the next thing is. And to make sure that I get in, you know, at least build a position in whatever the new emerging market is before, again, the mass adoption happens and it's over-regulated. That's where the big gains are at and, the, you know, the people who are willing to go out there and, you know, basically put it on the line and have a crack, they're the ones that do well and, the, you know, the sheep, well, they just get the same. They're not going to, you know, they're unlikely anyway to suddenly just come across something new and, you know, make millions of dollars and all the rest of it. It's only the brave who are willing to go out, you know, on a limb and just, you know, do the research and, you know, find out, you know, what they believe in and put the time and effort into it. They're the ones that will do the best. And, you know, it's like the, you know, Bitcoin OGs and all the rest of it and Ethereum OGs that got in years ago when they were buying it for cents or two or three dollars. They are absolutely laughing now. Uh, you know, that'd be worth a ton. And again, they'll have to look for the new markets in the future. But last but not least, let's go over and have a look at the markets. So again, we're nearly at that $400 billion mark now. We're so close. Again, it was 250, it was 260, it was 270, it was 280, and then, you know, it was 330, then we got to 350, then we got to 360, then we got to 370, 380, and then we pulled back again, and now we've just jumped up again. So we're getting so close to that $400 billion mark and moving closer to that sort of $1 trillion mark. Excuse me, a bit of a hiccup there. 
And once the market cap hits around that $1 trillion mark, that's when Bitcoin is going to be at around about $20,000 again. That's when the real moves are going to start to be made because people are going to hear about it a lot more. You know, the, the regular news will start to report on it. They'll be like, remember Bitcoin and everyone thought it had died and gone away? Well, believe it or not, it's back like it done it overnight. All of a sudden, it's, you know, nearly went to zero and then just turned around and came back to $20,000. And that's what people are going to hear. The general public who don't know, they're going to be, what? It's back. It's $20,000. Oh, my God, I better get in now. And, you know, it's not to say that $20,000 would be a horrible price to get into Bitcoin, but they've obviously missed a lot of gains, you know. You, you know, if, if you were really smart and really lucky, you know, one of the two, you could have been buying Bitcoin at sort of $3,000, $4,000 this year. So you would have already tripled your money if you were getting in at sort of three, dollars $4,000. $4,000 tripled your money and 3000 basically quadrupled your money. And it's most likely only going to go up from here. So if you bought Bitcoin at, you know, excuse me, let's say $4,000 and it goes to 100000 or 150000 or 200000 you know, God forbid 300000 that some people are talking about, I mean, you've 100 x your money, 1000 x you know, your money on some of these altcoins and things like that. There's going to be massive, massive profits to be made. And the early adopters, the people who are getting in now, they're going to be better off than everyone who comes after them. But likewise, those who got in before us, they're doing a lot better. Anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just some interesting stories I found. And again, Bitcoin, it moved. It just didn't do what I thought it was. I expected Bitcoin to come down and retrace, but it just moved up. But we'll have to wait and see whether this is a bit of a fake out and then we just roll over and come back down. Only time will tell. And again... Ethereum, we've still got to really kind of, you know, make that $430 mark some support for us to go even higher. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're still on that gain train and I'll see you next time.